Hello and welcome to Sitting Down with Schneider. It is May 5th and today we will be sitting down with Nicola Norris. And there she is. Hey, how are you? Oh my God, hi. <laughs> A long time no see. What's up? I know, I know. It's been forever. I'm sure you see my mom more than you see me in the past couple yeah, of years. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> you know, when we actually go into the bank, right? But yeah. yeah. I mean, we're always at the ATM or it's like, and now we can't even go outside our house. So yeah, I haven't seen anybody in a while. She was like, who are you talking to? And I'm like, I'm talking to Mr. Schneider. And she was like, oh my God, can I Zoom bomb? And I was like, oh my God, I've gotten my mom into technology. <laughs> you know what? If there was a, a Zoom bomb by your mom at any point in this chat, I'd be like super fired up. That'd be awesome. <laughs> She's making some uh, enchiladas for Cinco de Mayo right now. So nice. We'll see, we'll see if nice. that happens. Nice. So dinner's at six, right? No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Probably knowing her and her ways. <laughs> um, Patty is making a green chili enchiladas tonight and, and oh. for the same reason. Yeah. It's a family so favorite. So yummy. I'm Pretty already hungry. <laughs> hey, before I um, continue any more with this, are you cool with recording it and popping it onto the YouTube channel? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 100%. Cool, cool. Just want to make double sure. I can't believe it. I mean, we talked on the phone a couple times, but I don't think I've seen you in... Man, it has been many, many, many years. You were one of my first um, classes at Edna Hill. <laughs> I think it was fifth grade, right? Fifth grade, and it was it was either it was either my first or second one. And I remember you. Um, there are a few others that kept me pretty sane because the class as a whole was a little bit rough around the edges, if I recall. <laughs> wow, I don't remember that. <laughs> Maybe it was the year after you. I don't know. One of those groups. Uh, I do know. remember doing a project about Illinois. Illinois, okay. Yeah, we did our state projects in fifth grade. So I remember yes. that. I had did to, you like, work with, did you get to do a partner thing or was it, was it you and Caitlin? I remember you and Caitlin Bricks used to hang out all the time. Still, still peas still in the buddies? pod. Yeah. Oh, um, that I makes was, my heart so warm. How's she doing? Uh, she's doing good. Um, she got married two years ago now and I was in her wedding and if you ever check social media she's on Facebook and Instagram so I'm sure you could ask for a follow um, right but she on. is pregnant with her first baby <gasps> yeah no way oh my gosh KB well it's not Brixie anymore so um I will man that is really really cool well, maybe I'll reach yeah. out and just say hey I don't you know I don't know what she wants like her fifth grade teacher you know you're nice enough to sit down with me today. <laughs> I'm actually, you'll probably be shocked. A lot of us actually really enjoy listening from past teachers and just kind of seeing what everyone's doing. So that's what social media is for, right? Right on. Exactly. The good stuff, right? To say, hey, and not be all crazy. Hey, so um, uh, before we move on, introduce yourself. I know I've said your name a couple of times, but uh, tell us like what you're, up to, what to, what you're up to, what kind of activities you're involved in, stuff like that. Let the... <laughs> Any of our viewing public know uh, what you're up to? <laughs> yeah, hi everyone. Uh, my name's Nicola. I grew up in Brentwood. I went to Liberty High School. I am. I graduated in 07. Oh my goodness, it's been longer than a decade. Um, and then after high school, I did two years at a junior college. So I went to DVC for two years. Um, my senior year in high school, I didn't really know where I wanted to go. I did apply to colleges and get into some of the ones that I wanted to go to, but ultimately I was like, let me just kind of save money and didn't really know what my major was going to be. And I wanted to stay kind of close from home. I have a really good support system here. As I already mentioned, my mom once on the call. <laughs> right. Um, and then I transferred to UC Santa Barbara. Um, and so I went to Santa Barbara and I got a double bachelor's um, in history and in dance. So really fun. Continue to do the dancing. That's awesome. I did. And I'm still dancing to this day, which is great. Um, have always been in the performing arts. Um, but I also knew I needed like another degree just in case. 
dance didn't work out or whatnot. And um, honestly, sometimes those performing arts jobs don't pay the bills. So I got my history degree, thought I was going to be a teacher, did substitute teaching for a little bit in Brentwood. Mm -hmm. um, did the Liberty, I did Liberty. I went a couple times there. So it was kind of fun to be at my alma mater and walk on the halls again. Um, and then I decided that teaching wasn't for me because I looked like the students. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> thought I was one instead of a sub. Um, and I was like, maybe I'll wait a couple years before I go back into teaching. And then sports actually kind of found me. Um, at Liberty, I did a lot of leadership. Um, I did that actually, I think in middle school too. I did a lot of like the mm -hmm. class presidents and stuff. Um, and I just really liked being not behind a desk 365 days a year. And so I saw one of my friends, she worked for the Warriors at the time and they were going through their playoff streak and she was putting the rally towels down and shooting off confetti and she was at a huge like major event and I was like that seems like a cool job and like she was getting paid to be there and I was like okay what is this um and she found a job um, on teamwork online which is a kind of a job board site for just sports you can find these jobs on LinkedIn and whatnot but teamwork online is like the huge job forward for the sports industry and that's where a lot of people pull like the recruiters pull your resumes from um and so I just applied for jobs around the area so at this time I was a boomerang child I came back lived with mom and dad until I found my first job in the minor leagues right and so, who are you working with in the minor leagues um I was working for the Modesto Nuts at the time right. um so I would commute from Brentwood to Modesto every day um, and that's kind of how I got my in into the industry. Right on. And now you're working with, um, who are you with now? Woo woo. I'm working for yeah. the A. And I happened to put this on today. <laughs> little advertising. Did you hear the way I asked that too? It's like, and so, um, who are you with now? <laughs> I'm like, there it is. Uh, put <laughs> it on do just do, for this. <laughs> what do you do for the A's? Um, so I've had various promotions with the A's, but my current title um, is the premium service manager. And so I manage the five club spaces. So we added three club spaces last year. If anyone's been to the Coliseum, you've seen them. They're really easy to spot. Um, and so I manage the five, which is diamond level, field box, the new lounge, the new terrace, and the new Coppola boxes. And then the Coliseum has 150 suites there. It's massive. It's a huge, mm -hmm. huge project. Um, so I manage all of those as well with my team. And yeah, it, it's, it's, 82, it's 82 events a year in, in a six month time period. So man, my summers just, are busy. <laughs> busy, busy, busy. And just such a good yeah. example of, you know, I mean, even, way back when in fifth grade you were always just such an personable kid great with you know relationships you're Aww, like nice thanks. to people no it's just a good you know what i mean and history major and dance but you kept those eyes open as you know what would you know what where something might uh lend itself to a really fun career and it seems to have just taken off you seem to really be enjoying it so that's great yeah it's a lot of work i promise you that and a lot of the stuff i think if i got my sports management degree or a business degree instead of a history degree, I, I think you would just learn it all on the job anyway. Anything from like your bachelor's, you'll probably just learn as the entry level position. It's really moving up the, the ladder in, in the industry. And some people say you don't need it. You just got to, you know, keep working your way and crafting your skill. And so for now, just keep crafting my skill and Hey, I thought I was going to go to law school with a history degree and I was done. <laughs> I'm telling you four year or three. Yeah. Four years at UC. Oh, done. School is, I love I, to learn, but people man, can I'm definitely something. change their minds, right? We definitely change our minds. I know I was watching some of your um, other ones and they're like seniors and they're excited to go to school. And I'm like, I don't want to go back to school. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> And we're not going to discourage them. Just go in you no. know, cautiously, right? Okay, cool. Exactly. I'm like, it's going to be a lot of work. It's rewarding at the end. But for me, I'm like trying to get my master's right now. I was like, I don't think I can do it. <laughs> Are you actually working on your master's? Um, not yet. I've thought about it. Um, I've thought 
maybe this would be a good time just because we've had this downtime right now and just look at maybe GREs and taking that test and just taking um, like a more of an MBA in business. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I took a hospitality management course during this time um, and realized that I'm not ready to go back. So it was a good little test to take a class for free and, and see if I could focus for that long and decided that I'd rather work and keep perfecting my craft. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. So, um, right now with what's going on with our whole pandemic mm -hmm. and everything and all the shelter in place, are you still able to do some, some work with the, with the major league baseball? Is it like, or are you just kind of tucked away until they make a decision to move forward a little bit? Yeah, this is really crazy. So I mentioned six months out of the year, there's 82 events I put on and I'm a very busy person. Um, so we're all work from home. Um, because we live in a Bay Area and the technology is so advanced, we were able to kind of transition to work from home pretty easily. Some of my counterparts in the, in the league, whether that's in Florida or New York or wherever, some of them were having just kind of like technological issues, meaning they didn't have you know, Zoom yet on like a, right. within their office or they didn't have Google Hangouts. So we were really fortunate. We were able to like turn it on really quickly. And so we went immediately like work from home. And so I'm managing all of these accounts. And so they, they're all clients of mine and we're just kind of waiting on the lead direction right now on what 2020 looks like. So we've gotten orders of like, keep holding tight, like clients are actually really nice and are really just checking in on us, which is really nice too. They're not, you know, angry with the league or anything. They're just grateful that they have us to communicate and they just want to make sure I'm healthy. So, you know, that's years of building up, you know, that's relationship I've had with the clients and they just were like, just let me know what's going on and when the league makes a decision. So good news. The Korean baseball started last night. So we had like first live events, you oh, know, man. somewhere. I'm going to try and pull world. that up somehow. <laughs> yeah, it's actually really good. Um, baseball, and baseball, some kind of baseball. Is. And it's live. So it's not like a rerun of 2012 <laughs> or World Series when the Cubs won. Like it's just, it's real live time. And then we were all watching it and I started laughing because they got a rain delay. And I'm like, of course, on opening day, they get a rain delay. And then I heard another one had a fire behind its um, field just by accident. I need to look up on that one more. But if they can do it, I'm sure we'll come back. And there's a bunch of speculation out there. And, you know, I read it too because this is my job. And as long as if we have fans and ticket sales, like that's my job. Right. So, you know, I'm just kind of, I read the speculations and what they're doing in the news, but sometimes like I got to step away. I'm like, I don't want to have all this speculation when I have orders saying, just be patient and wait. So I'm just right. kind I think of that's kind of all of tight. our game, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're all in that scenario. We're just like, we can't, and I'm really encouraging to hear, like you said, your clients are not blaming the league or blaming you. I mean, what are you going to do? Right. It's like, you've just got to kind of, wait for those orders to trickle down and then you know we'll take care of business when the time is right but no one likes to be given like a bad time about it and everything so it's just like you said that the it's really neat that the relationships that you've created have led to them being you know at least kind-hearted and 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 understanding during all this you know that's really really key yeah i always tell them they're my A's family because i see them for six months more than i see my own family Oh my goodness. Yeah, I'll, I'll go through a 13 day homestand and then it starts on, what, on a Thursday, go to the Wednesday, finish out the weekend. And then all of a sudden I'm back in the office on that Monday and I'm like, oh, I still got another regular work hours on Tuesday through Friday. I'm like, what's my next off day? <laughs> my goodness. Um, so, you know, part of your, um, just the, the relationships you make, I, I saw, um, was it, I think it was last year um, when you were in Brentwood, you, you were with, um, were you with Fabulous Feet? Yeah, the dance yes. studio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Fabulous Feet. And the fact that you, um, I think there was something that was posted where you came back and you did some classes yeah. with the little kids and everything. It's just such a, um, 
reflection on what an amazing kid you are. And I just think yeah. that um, it's neat to still see, see that you are still doing stuff with dance and, and all that. So that's really, really cool. Yeah. So I will do like pop-up classes and I'll just go in there. So the kids are so good. I was like, oh my God, you guys are way better than I was at 10 years old. And, but they're always doing like the same style all the time. And so they'll bring me in and I'll do a different style for them. That'll get them out of their comfort zone, but it's also fun for them and get the high energy going and get them out of a routine. Cause it could get every day doing the certain you go to your ballet class and your lyrical class into your jazz class. And then all of a sudden you come to me and it's just like jazz funk. Let's have fun. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. Yeah. So it's are we, um, fun. are we able to, to, to mention what you do um, as, as another uh, job opportunity dance wise um, yeah. in the past, the past couple seasons? I know nothing um, recent, but um, are we able to mention that you're able to, to do that? Is that okay? Yeah, so um, for the past three seasons, on top of working for the A's, I've also cheered for the Oakland Raiders, so it's been three Keeping years. Keeping the dance going. Yes. Yeah, so my dance degree actually went to something. Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> um, it's been so much fun. It was, honestly, it was a dream come true. I've been away from dance from my bachelor's into when I auditioned for about five years. And it was super spontaneous. One of my friends threw a throwback on her social media. I think this was like right when Instagram was starting to get started with their stories. And I was like, oh my God, I forgot she did that. That looks like fun. And I just like, hmm. So I just went on the internet and typed in Raiderettes and saw the auditions, had it passed for that season. And, and you had all applied. that dance experience. And I was like, I just applied. I was like, I've been stretching. I feel like I could do it. Let me just, let's see if I can get to the finals. I sent in my application five days before prelims and prelims happened to be on the same day as the exhibition game against the Giants at the Coliseum. So I had to be at the Coliseum. They gave me an early time. The Raiders did. They gave me an early time at 9 a.m. And I, that's like the busiest time for me is right before gates open. And so I was able to get the Raiders to push my prelim time to the afternoon <laughs> so that I could day. work the game, then hop over to their offices in Alameda and was, I don't even know, I had makeup on, I had fake eyelashes at the game, someone that was <laughs> new was like, do we dress up for like game days? And I'm like, didn't tell a soul what I was doing. And wow. then I had to do my prelims at the Alameda and then they didn't tell us until opening night of the A's game so I find out I'm a finalist on opening night as I'm laminating stuff for the season ticket area wow. and I like don't even know what happened I was like looking at my phone and I was like oh my god it's time to see if my number's on this <laughs> you laminated your phone <laughs> And then I was like, shoot, do I still have jazz shoes? I don't have an audition outfit. I was like, I have, a, I have four days before finals to get this ready. And the wow. night before, I learned the routine. I rhinestoned my outfit. I had jazz shoes and I had tights. And I was like, perfect. Here we go. And then I went to finals and I made it. And I've been doing it for two more years after that. So Such crazy. a great example of how you just got to, you know, I mean, if you had said to yourself, oh, it's too much right now, you know, I'm in the middle of doing all this other stuff, you know what I mean? You just got to throw your hat in the ring sometimes, and as chaotic as it was, look what it led to. That's just, that's a really cool story. Yeah, I got to work for, I work for two amazing organizations in Oakland, and I've done so many community outreach with the A's and the Raiders that it's just been it's like leadership all over again from high school, but now I do it in real life and get paid to do oh, it. And, and it's fun. And it's, I'm not always behind a desk 365 days a year. I am probably half the year, and, but like the other half, I'm like out and about and I'm meeting people. So definitely something that, you know, is really fun and rewarding. So neat. So. What a cool, what a cool, uh, just both. I think both opportunities. And like you said, it's not all, you know, fun and games, it's a lot of hard work on both sides, but um, just to, that idea of that kind of, not to be too like weird or etherical or whatever, but just that follow your dream. If you feel like you mm -hmm. have a shot, go for it. 
what was the worst thing that could have happened, right? They could have told they say you no. They, no. <laughs> right. they say no. I mean, we did completely separate from obviously what you did. My mom, she's 90. She comes in and one day says, the Warriors are holding um, auditions for, um, the, there's that older group for the Warriors. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Like, what are they, right? The Blue Crew, I think they're called now. Right, I yeah. Know. And, you know, I guess it's like 65 or over. Now she's sitting on 90, right? And, and, and we're like, hey, you want to audition? Patty and I literally, oh God, she got her, her Warrior stuff on. She auditioned for it. Good for it didn't her. Work out. We didn't have the same result as you had. <laughs> there were some people in there that were like ex dancers and people that were crazy. My mom, it was a very fun experience. But we thought, why not? You know what I mean? Yeah. Why not give it a go? Um, so um, I don't know. It's not really similar to your story. But it's just no, kind of <laughs> audition, audition processes are all the same. They're interview, dance technique. It's Millions of people, right? Just it can be super intimidating. I mean, yeah. were there a lot of people auditioning when you went that first time for the Raiders? Yeah, there's every year. Like the first round is usually, I would say about anywhere from 500 to 900 girls that might put in an application and then be overwhelming my god it's a lot and then you get down to like the semi-finalists so that round you know they've made a couple cuts and they've probably made it down to like the 300 kind of amount depending on what they're looking for and then finals are usually you bring all the vets back and then you've got maybe 100 to 200 girls and then they narrow it down to anywhere between 32 and 40. And that's probably what your mom went through. They probably <laughs> went that same stats. So like, we can only take 30 people. Yeah, but she's super chill because she's 90 and didn't have any idea what was going on. So it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if, I, if I recall, yeah. maybe she came out before, like, it was totally over. She's like, yeah, no, I'm good. As, this was fun, but I'm good. Yeah, you know. This is, I'm so go glad to, she did. That makes coffee. me so happy. Yeah, let's go get a <laughs> coffee. Makes me so happy. I would do it. All right, kiddo. Well, hey, I'm going to let you go. Um, yeah. I just, I, I, this was so fun to, to see you and be able to chat. And, um, and I just wish you the best. And I hope we can get baseball started soon. Yes. Um, not only for you, but just, you know, for a lot of uh, our mental health. You know, I, we, we look so forward to it. And I, I don't know if you recall, I'm a huge baseball fan from, you know, back in, back in teaching in fifth. And, um, always have loved it. So I can't wait till that comes back. And uh, yeah, just if you, if you talk to um, uh, Caitlin, tell her yeah. congratulations. I for will, me. I will. I would, I'd love that. And um, enjoy those uh, enchiladas tonight. It's enchiladas, right? Yeah. It is enchiladas tonight. <laughs> so it's going to cool. be yummy. <laughs> mm. All right, kiddo. Well, thank you so much for sitting down today. Yeah. I appreciate it so much. Yeah, thanks for having me. And this is so cool. I think it's really good for everyone to kind of see what different parts of everyone's lives are being either affected or what they're doing. Or I was watching some of the senior ones and I was like, oh my God, I couldn't imagine missing prom right now and, and walking. And I hope they can postpone and reschedule all of it. Like I really feel for them and we'll get through it. And I just think it's really good to hear from how everyone's doing just because like someone could be more. completely isolated and not even know anything and they can find this. So I think this is really awesome. I really appreciate that. Yeah. And, and I think it's neat to hear um, what everyone's, you know, bring to the table and for selfish reasons, I'm getting a chance to, to, to hang out <laughs> and see some people that I haven't seen in a while. So um, yeah, it's uh, I'm a very, years. I'm a double lucky <laughs> individual. Yeah. yeah. Lucky. I agree with you. I think that, um, it's, it's nice for people to see some familiar faces and just yeah. kind of hear what they're up to. So cool. Yeah. cool. All right, kiddo. Alrighty. I'm sorry. You're not a kid anymore, but it's just. Oh, you can nature. call me kiddo. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind. <laughs> Have a great night. Okay. All right. Bye everyone. Thanks bye -bye. for having me.